Good morning. Welcome to worship. Those of you who are in the sanctuary already, welcome those who are coming up from downstairs. Fellowship time is ferociously fun, I guess. <laughs> and welcome to you who are live streaming and uh, joining us uh, um, online today. Welcome and thank you. We really count you as our congregation and welcome the communion that we have, the fellowship we have.
continue our worship with a return to the baptismal font where God's promises are remembered and lived into. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires are known. We come to you, confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy, and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the words of God's forgiveness. We remember our baptism as we hear that God is rich in mercy and even when we were dead in sin, God has made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ might live in your hearts through faith. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world and for the for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, and I invite you to join with me now.
start out our readings today uh, kind of as an introduction with the psalm, which is by half verse today. Please uh, respond with the bold print. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. We continue with our other reading. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 4 through 7. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading comes from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet, have you not made the distinction among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised for those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is, not the is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. 
for judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good it is, is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of them says, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Here ends the first reading. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise and we sing our acclamation for the gospel. Contributing to the treasury. 
for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say praise to you, O Christ. I invite the kids to come up. Is there any kids that will come up today? And I have something for you, and I have something for you to do. Hi, let's stand right about here so everyone can see. Maybe there will be some kids um, watching at home on YouTube that could see too. And you brought something for us to see. One of God's creatures? What kind of creature is it? It's a caterpillar, and it's fuzzy and cute. And um, can, did you hold it? By, and I see you have air holes there. And we don't maybe want to let him get away. Um, <laughs> but Because then he might get squished, and that'd be sad. Right? Yeah, they, you can almost step on those things. Yeah, well, I have, what do I have here? You remember what that's called? What does it look like? It looks like a, almost like a plate or a bowl, right? Yeah, a circle. Yeah, a circle. Okay. And um, what do we put in here? Money. Money. And what do we call the money sometimes? Our off offering, right? Our offering. I'm going to give you a couple points to hold. Because did you hear the story I just read about that lady who put what? Two little coins into the plate. I want you just to drop them from high. high. There you go. They made a little noise. She just did one, and she did two. Now, do you think she had a lot of money? Jesus said she didn't have a lot of money. Do you have some money? Yeah. Do you have lots of money? Good. So, um, have you ever thought about putting some of that money in here? No. Okay. That's all right. Because there are other things that we bring to God, too. What else do you think we could bring to God besides money? Maybe a caterpillar. You want to set them in here for a little bit? We bring the things that we love in creation, maybe. Um, this is kind of small, but is there anything of you that you think God could use? Like your, what? Do you think God could use you? Use something you can do? Like, can you talk? Yeah, so you could talk about Jesus. Can you think? Yeah, so you, your brain could be used by God? Can you run? Yeah, I've seen that. Okay, so, but this is too small. Do you want to just try, like, putting a foot in there and seeing how big that would be? That wouldn't be very handy, would it? No. Can you even fit your head in it? I don't think so. So we don't put ourselves in here, and that's part of why we put the money, because money is special to us a lot of times. And so is this caterpillar I'm holding. Money is special to us, and so that means, reminds us that we give everything that's special to us back to God. That's, can you say offering again? Offering, we are offering all of us, not just our money, but all of us. I'm going to give you a good handful. Are you going to help with the offering today? I'm going to give you a good handful of money to keep track of between now and then, and then you'll have something to put in the offering plate when you come up, okay? Then you'll have some offering to give today. Um, but we offer that because we're so thankful to God. So let's say a thank you prayer today. Let's say thank you, God, for all of your gifts and help us to thank you, all right? <laughs> all right, one, two, three. Thank you, God, for all of our gifts. And help us to thank you. Amen. All right, remember your offering when you come up, okay? And are you going to help me be an usher today? Okay. All right, thanks. Oh, and here we go. Now I offer this to you. There you go.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's kind of a theme in the readings that we have had for the last few weeks. Um, we have spent all of August reading stories in Matthew and Mark. Or in Mark, not Matthew. Where did that come from? And in Mark, Mark's gospel, in this section, Jesus has been trying to remind his disciples what the kingdom of God is about and what his role and what he is going to do to bring in the kingdom. Do you remember what he warns or foretells his disciples about? He tells them at least three times that he is going to give up his life and die and suffer for them and for the world and the kingdom. I just wanted to let to remind you of some of the things that we have heard Jesus say over the last few weeks. Um, in the first prediction where he uh, first tells them that he is going to die, he says, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. And again, uh, in chapter 10, uh, he said, or chapter 9, he says, um, uh, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed, and uh, they will kill him, and three days later he will rise again, and um, they had been arguing about who would be the greatest right after that. So he tells them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And then he, remember he takes the little child and says, um, it's whoever welcomes somebody like this is, uh, is welcomes me. And that's what the kingdom of God is about. Then the very next chapter, again, uh, the disciples are actually arguing again about who will be the greatest. And Jesus says, in other places, you know, governors and kings lord it over you, but not so with you. You remember this? Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first of all must be be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom to many. The reading that we have today is often used, um, mostly used, to talk about giving, offering at church on Sunday morning or for your church, and this woman's voice has spoken across 2,000 years of that preaching. Um, she has uh, done more with those two copper coins than many people did with sermons and um, a, a lot of teaching. But there is more, more that this woman can say because you guys have been hearing about another thing going on, this theme about not being first in line, but choosing to be last for others' sake. A theme about how honor in the kingdom isn't going to be about being strong or amazing or powerful looking. It's going to be about serving your neighbor and looking like, like nothing at all. And so this woman today embodies that theme and that message of Jesus about the kingdom. You heard, she's, everybody's giving their offering to the treasury in the temple. This is a good thing. It keeps the temple going. The temple was an expensive place. Uh, there were lots of priests that needed support. And so um, people gave mightily and well. And, and some of those folks were just giving because they wanted to. Others were keeping up appearances. 
You remember that show in uh, the PBS show, British Comedy? <laughs> My grandmother loved this show called Keeping Up Appearances. Uh, if you haven't, um, that's okay, and I'm not going to get into it, but it was this lady who was always thinking about what the neighbors thought she looked like and doing all sorts of contortions and cartwheels and crazy things in order to look good, which she just ended up looking ridiculous. Uh, but uh, this is what the folks are doing in this reading, um, it seems. You get the impression from Jesus' words that they are giving so that people can see that they're giving a lot and respect and honor them. Remember the rich man uh, a couple of weeks ago when people said, well, if he can't be saved on his own, who could be? Because people who were well-to-do looked like they had been blessed by God and, and, that, and that that was what God must love them extra. And so, so giving a large thing at the treasury would just how people think good of you, that maybe God loved you a little bit more. I would say that is giving uh, to, to look holy. Maybe we could call that kind of giving holy giving, um, even though it's from the wrong motivation. We don't know anything about this woman who is a widow. That's the one thing we do know. Uh, uh, she, but we do know that widows had nothing often because they couldn't own land or own things in that culture uh, and with their husbands passed away they were very vulnerable to poverty and to people taking advantage of them and indeed Jesus says watch out for even religious people to be taking advantage of the most vulnerable widows and orphans we don't know if that had happened to this widow but here she is in the temple, and Jesus, whether it's because he's the Son of God or because maybe he knows her from somewhere, he says, look at that, to his disciples. He says, look, she has given only two copper coins. But in giving that, it's like way more than the others because that's all she had to live on. Now, a stewardship sermon might be, Go and do likewise. And it's good to give because God works through all of our gifts, like Katan and I were talking about. God uses the gifts that God has given us as we give them on. That's how God works. I say there's more to it even than that, though. Jesus, remember, is talking about the kingdom. And when this scribe comes up to him and asks him what the best commandment is, Jesus says, the most important, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with everything. Heart, soul, mind, strength. If you want to hear something from me today to do, that's it. Jesus said it. Uh, it's part of the Jewish law called the Shema, and it's, it's what we are called to devote our whole selves. That's holy giving, not just holy giving. That's giving holy with everything we have and are. And Jesus says, what else? Love your neighbor as yourself, which is all part of it. Um, and all part of that theme or that message that Jesus has about the kingdom. That if you want to be first, be, we're called to be last. If you want to be greatest, you're called to be like one of the smallest children who don't have anything to offer. And if you want to find your life, we lose it in Christ in the waters of baptism, in the cross of Christ, where we die with him, but we are also raised with him. Jesus is telling those folks and us that he has come to give everything he has to live on. Jesus was the most faithful 
impossible. We can't be faithful like that. We are sometimes like those who want to keep up appearances. Or we simply decide not to give it all. Give at all. I mean, not it all. At all. <laughs> uh, because of our sin and the self-centeredness that is our tendency. But Christ, Christ whom we focus on and look to, Jesus Christ who has come with this message of good news, he's come to be totally faithful, perfectly faithful. And you know what? Not just for himself, but for the likes of us too. That widow, just like the blind man, his eyes being opened, is like uh, an example of what the kingdom is going to be like. And guess who's going to do it perfectly? Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the cross gave up everything he had to live on, in, including his own breath and his blood and his body, given for you. And the miracle and power of Jesus is that when you receive that body and blood, that gift of God, it changes you. The Holy Spirit comes and fills you and changes your heart each time it happens and makes you willing to give a little, to be least, to step back to the last in line, to give up your life, whatever it may be, whether it's a caterpillar in the offering plate or your favorite toy, whatever that may be, or your time, your abilities, your talents, all of those aren't a should. <laughs> and we hate to think of a system that tells widows who don't have anything they better give their last two coins. That is not justice. What's justice is God's mercy that says, boy, that is a beautiful gift. You don't have to do that. You, I have given you everything. We don't have to give. So now that we don't have to, what are we going to give? We get to give. Because we get to be part of this new amazing kingdom where we have a Lord who gave himself for us. We are his people, his disciples. We are called to holy giving and holy giving our whole selves to this kingdom and to our God for the sake of our neighbor. Not because we have to, but for the joy of it. For the joy of what God is doing in our world and our lives. May it be so for you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn is 696, and we'll be singing verses 3, 4, and 5.
we think of those people and we offer that now um, and remember that as we receive this offering, which will just be for our congregation's uh, offering, but that was uh, earlier this week. So ushers, come forward.
joining today, coming today, and uh, have a good week.